The dividend snowball is a strategy where investors reinvest their dividends to purchase additional shares of whatever stock or ETF is paying the dividends in the first place. Now through this process, it allows the investor to buy more and more shares over time, potentially leading to an increasing stream of dividends, allowing the power of compounding to take place. And over time, as more shares are acquired through reinvesting these dividends, the subsequent dividend payments get bigger and bigger. And this creates a compounding effect known as the dividend snowball. Similar to another concept that's popular known as the financial snowball, where small amounts grow into larger amounts over time, the dividend snowball relies on the power of compounding the effect of reinvesting dividends to potentially grow an investment's portfolio value and income. This can be illustrated using basic math. Like for example, if you have $100 and it earns 5% per year, at the end of that year, you'll have $105. And then by the second year, if you earn 5% on that, the numbers are going to get bigger and bigger as the numbers get bigger and bigger. Now in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about dividend snowball effect and why the dividend snowball really starts to take off once your portfolio hits $100,000. I just finished my brand new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from zero to now over seven figures invested and also on how I earn more than $6,000 per month in dividends. I also finished my custom dividend tracker that you can use to track your dividend income progress on an ongoing basis. So make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today it's the first link in my description now this right here is one of my actual long-term dividend growth portfolios that's currently valued at around five hundred and thirty-four thousand dollars as a film in this video this portfolio is made up of different stocks and etfs that all have a few things in common they all have the potential to go up in value over the long term but also every single position in this portfolio is currently paying me a dividend on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis now, this is a portfolio that, of course, did not take place overnight. I've been building out this portfolio for several years now, going on my seventh year as of right now. And as of right now, this portfolio alone is currently paying me around $2,200 every single month in dividend income on average, or around $26,300 per year in estimate annual income. Now, before we head over to the dividend calculator, and I show you why the power of compounding the dividend snowball really seems to take off after your portfolio hits $100,000, I first want to make something very, very clear. When it comes to investing, especially dividend growth investing, it is a very specific individual journey. And one of the main important metrics I want everyone to be well aware of when it comes to dividend growth investing is something as simple as knowing your expenses on a monthly, nearly basis. Now, knowing your expenses is so important because a lot of dividend investors, including myself, started dividend investing with the hopes of financial freedom, meaning that you're bringing in more dividend income or at least enough dividend income on a monthly basis. In this case, let's say, for example, $2,191. And the goal is to be able to cover all your bills and maybe even some more with the dividends paid alone. Now, at this point, you would no longer even need to work at your job in theory because your dividends could pay all your bills and then some. So I want to make it very clear that everyone here watching this video has a different amount of expenses and we all live different lifestyles. So just because my dividend snowball really seemed to take off at one certain point doesn't mean that your dividend snowball is not going to take off at a different point. Because when it comes to investing, it's all about perspective. For example, this portfolio right here might seem massive to some investors, and there's other investors out there, of course, that might make more than this entire portfolio in one single trade. So I think it's important to note that we all have different goals, different strategies, and of course, we're all on our own journey. But with all that being said, I do think that the $100,000 mark, as far as an investment milestone, is a very, very important one. Now, to show you the exact power of compounding and how the snowball effect really takes place once the portfolio starts to get moving, if we were to head over here to the dividend calculator and type in a $20,000 starting principle with a 3.6% initial annual dividend yield, which is something similar to that of like SCHD ETF, then if we had an expected annual dividend amount increase of 9%, which once again, for the investors out there that own SCHD, these numbers are going to be very familiar. But with this also, we are going to have a $12,000 contribution. So this investor in theory would be also adding around 250 bucks a week into the portfolio from outside cash. The portfolio would then be paying a distribution on a quarterly frequency, which is pretty common across most stocks and ETFs and drip or dividend reinvestment will be turned on. So before we even go through the exact numbers, you can see right here on the chart that after around 10 or so years, the chart really starts to curl up and the power of compounding really starts to kick in, meaning that the numbers start to get larger and larger. And then since you're compounding off those previous numbers, the numbers start to get insane as time goes on. But to be more specific, this is how an investor's journey would look with a $20,000 initial principal and around a $12,000 annual contribution on top of that. Now, the investor year number one would have $20,000 in principal and around $729 of dividends, which again are going to be reinvested. And then, of course, the annual contribution of $12,000. So year number two, the portfolio is already going to be at $33,000, which is great. 
and around $1,283 per year in dividends. Now it's going to take this investor around six or seven years until they reach that magic moment, that magic milestone of passing $100,000 invested. And the reason why this milestone is significant to most investors is because at this point, the dividends, the numbers, the compounding effect really starts to kick in. For example, by year number eight, after that $100,000 milestone was reached, we're looking at $7,000 plus per year in dividends. And then after year number nine and 10, the numbers start to get really large, where this portfolio is already over $1,000 per month in dividends on an ongoing basis. Now, of course, as time goes on, the longer you stay in the market and allow the money to keep compounding, the larger your portfolio is going to get in theory, and of course, the larger the dividends are going to get on top of that. For example, by year number 20, let's say a young investor stayed with us for 20 years. And just by going off the numbers we went off of, this investor would have $660,000 in principal and $72,000 per year in dividends. Now from year number 25 to 30, the numbers really, really start to get large. And this is where the power of compounding really starts to curl up. But once again, I'll repeat something that I said earlier. These numbers are only going to be large or small depending on where you're at. And of course, depending on what your expenses are at. For some investors, maybe earning $2,700 on a yearly basis from dividends alone would be life-changing, where maybe some other investors out there wouldn't even think it's worth their time. Now, I say this just to remind everyone that even though the $100,000 milestone when it comes to dividend investing is a very important one, and it's definitely going to be a point in your investing journey where you see things really take off, it's still all going to be relative to what your situation is and where you're at. Now, lastly, just to close off in this video, I wanted to tell you when I felt like the snowball effect really started to kick in for my long-term portfolio. I would say just about a few months ago even. It really feels like my portfolio is starting to gain some steam in the sense that I'm now getting dividends pretty consistently, large enough to allow me to buy some of my favorite holdings on a daily basis. Like for example, I enjoy buying shares of Schwab's US Dividend Equity ETF or SEHD on a daily basis as of right now, I'm going to purchase a minimum of two shares every single trading day throughout this entire year, which will allow me to surpass the 1,000 share of SHD goal by 2025 if I stick with that. Now, on certain days where there's more cash balance in my portfolio, I might even grab an extra share or two, but for the most part, I'm going to continue to buy more shares of SHD and hold the shares that I have really tightly. And with the amount of dividends I'm being paid currently throughout my portfolios, I'm able to buy a share or two every single day, which has been awesome. But that being said, if you guys want to follow along my journey and see how the portfolio looks month over month or year over year, make sure to subscribe because I will be sharing all the behind the scenes of my buys and portfolio reviews pretty consistently. But when it comes to long-term dividend growth investing and the snowball effect, I want to hear from you guys down below. What is a specific current milestone that you're working on? Drop it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like and, and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.